Six men, carefully chosen for their courage and ability, formed the Arizona Rangers. Fame and public acclaim was not their objective. This is perhaps why the story of these 26 men has never been told until now. Back at the turn of the century, when the nearest ranger was on duty somewhere else, the citizens of a frontier town sometimes took the law into their own hands. Their method of law enforcement was a rope. For? Open up that door. Yeah. You want to make a fight with us voters and taxpayers? What am I going to do? I can't fight a mob. You know your duty just as I know my duty. If a man has faith, there's no such thing as fear. I'll take care of this. Wait a minute, man. You've been drinking. Yeah, right? sure, but we ain't stingy. We even brought a bottle for you. Look, it's my duty to protect all of us. This one isn't your duty to protect the Hachi horse thieves. Yeah. Don't do this. If you can't believe in your own laws, what about the laws of God? Well, hang that preacher, too. Why not? Yeah. Trying to protect those horses, that makes him as bad as they are. Yeah, that makes him an accessory after the fact. You can't be serious. This is a man of the cloth. What's the matter with you? You're supposed to be a sheriff. Don't you even know the law? You're not only drunk, you're out of your mind. Look, if you try to stop us, you're out of your mind. All right, here, take us. Go get those keys. Come on, take them out. Bring them out of there. Come on, hurry up. words you want to say? I say to you both, have faith and you shall have no fear. Believe his words. This night we shall join him in paradise. All right, Snyder. Take it away. You sent for me, Captain? Yes, Travis. This is Mrs. Brigham, Clint Travis. How do you do? I want you to hear this. This young lady wants us to investigate a missing person. Her husband is the Reverend Dr. Matthew Brigham. They're from Salt Lake City. She thinks something may have happened to him. Something did happen. He'd never send a telegram. Not like that second one. Her husband went to Gaileyville to set up a mission. Why would he leave the mission? He'd only just started it. She's been waiting in Tucson until she heard from her husband. She's heard from him twice. Once. She got this first telegram last Saturday. It says that he set up the mission in a tent. But there was some trouble when two young Apache Indians were falsely arrested for horse stealing. I'm sure he did send that one. The second telegram, sent Sunday from Gaileyville, told her that he had to leave at once for Salt Lake City and for her to wait in Tucson for him. Nothing else. I'm sure he didn't send that one. Why should he go back to Salt Lake and leave me waiting in Tucson? 
Mrs. Brigham, I can understand your anxiety, but I'm sure there's some simple explanation. Telegraph service from Gaileyville is pretty bad. We can hardly get accurate messages ourselves. But I'll send Ranger Travis there to investigate. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be back. There are two other telegrams that she doesn't know about yet. The first one's an answer to a wire I sent to the sheriff of Gaileyville. He says he didn't arrest two Apaches last Saturday night. He also says he never heard of a preacher by the name of the Reverend Brigham. You don't think her husband's been lying to her? No. Here. Now listen to this one, just came over the wire. Last Saturday night, a bunch of Gaileyville drunks lynched two Apaches and a preacher named Matthew Brigham. Who sent that one? And well, it came out of Gaileyville and is signed a friend. Let's hear from you, Travis. See you, Captain. up too. Is there a hotel in town? Mr. Lemke here runs the Crystal Palace. He has a few rooms. Talk to him. What are the rates? Got a new rule. We don't put up any strangers unless we know who they are. Why is that? Well, we get a lot of drifters through here. Some of them got bad records. We like them to drift right on through. Arizona Rangers uh, have to pay my own expenses. I hope I can afford a room. Sorry, my rooms are full up. Well, I guess I'll have to bunk in the barn. I've done it before. How much to put up a horse? Stable's full up. Sorry. Well, I'll say one thing for this town. If you treat all drifters the way you treat a ranger, you don't get much trouble here. run the newspaper and I'll run the sheriff's office. All right, all right. Well, what do you want? Turn Travis, Rangers. Fly Travis, Sheriff. Glad to see you, Ranger, but I uh, don't think the sheriff is. All right, cut it. This is Paul Cullen. He runs a local newspaper. Gaileyville Weekly News, uh, if you can call that a newspaper. All right, Paul, you can go. If the Ranger here is on business, he wants to talk to me. Now, if he's here to see about the lynching, Maybe he'd like to talk to me. What lynching, Mr. Cullen? Well, he, he's got some crazy idea the three men were hung here Saturday night. He, he must have been drunk. No, I wasn't drunk. But uh, a lot of other people sure were. Did you see this lynching? No, I wasn't there myself. Were you supposed to be a newspaper man? Why weren't you there? You're supposed to be the sheriff. Why weren't you there? Because there wasn't a hanging. Why is he here? This telegram from here in Gaileyville was sent to Ranger headquarters. Last Saturday night, a bunch of Gaileyville drunks lynched two Apaches and a preacher named Matthew Brigham. It signed a friend. And what kind of a crank would want to send a wire like that? I don't know. I thought I'd see the local telegraph operator. He ought to know. I can save you some time, Ranger. I sent that wire. You sent it? I thought it was about time we had some law in this town. Now, you listen to me. I'm not here to settle any fight between the local newspaper and the sheriff's office. I'm here about a possible hanging. I'm sure the sheriff wants me to hear why you think there was one. Go ahead and tell him, Cullen. Well, I put the paper to bed uh, about midnight Saturday night. And if I didn't hear any drunks out on the street, it's because the presses were making too much noise. And if I didn't uh, see the lynching, it's because uh, I'm understaffed at the Gaileyville Weekly News. I'm uh, editor, publisher, uh, the only reporter. Uh, I run the presses. Uh, oh, yes, and I'm janitor, too. Go on, Mr. Cullen. On my way home that night, uh, passing the stable, I saw Tony Snyder taking three brand new ropes from an overhanging sign. They still had some kinks in them while he was coiling them up. Well, maybe he was just stretching the ropes. But what'd he use for weights? There was a hangman's noose on the end of each rope. 
The next day, two Apaches and a minister vanished from this town. Tell them about the Apache, Sheriff. Well, there was some talk in town Saturday night. Seems that uh, Tony Snyder, he runs a local stable, said a couple of Indians came in and stole some of his horses, drove them off to the reservation. Well, I went out and talked to these Apaches, but there was no evidence, so I let them go. What about the Reverend Brigham? Well, there was talk about a preacher in a new tent mission just outside of town. What kind of talk? Well, somebody said that maybe this preacher was hiding those Apaches. Well, I didn't bother to see the preacher. There was no evidence. That's the trouble in this town. The sheriff can never find any evidence about anything. Another telegram I'd like to ask you about. Seems the Reverend Brigham sent a message to his wife in Tucson saying he had to leave unexpectedly for Salt Lake City. This wire was sent from here Sunday morning. But Mrs. Brigham doesn't think her husband sent it. Who does she think did send it? She doesn't know. I thought I'd see the local telegraph operator. Name's Whitmire. Uh, Sparks Whitmire. Oh, uh, Sheriff, you care to join us? This way, Mr. Travis. Anybody want to do a fool thing like that? Sheriff, I don't think he meant it to be a fool thing. What do you mean? Why don't you go after him? Well, I, I'd never be able to catch him. Dead only a few minutes. Sparks Whitmire. Finally got his name in the Gailyville Weekly News. Why do you think he was knifed? Well, if you want my guess, it's because he sent a couple of telegrams he shouldn't have sent. The one I sent, and the one somebody else sent in behalf of Reverend Brigham. Morning, folks. Morning. Morning. Howdy. Howdy. I'm trying to locate a preacher named Brigham. Any of you people know him? We haven't heard of a preacher in Gailyville. I understand a preacher and two Apaches were hanged a few nights ago. Know anything about it? Come along, Martha. <laughs> Morning, Ranger. Get a good night's sleep? No thanks to Gailyville. Let's go inside. I want to see your books. My books? I want to see if you saw some rope last Saturday. What rope? The rope used late Saturday night down at the stable. Brand new rope. Still had kinks. You run the only hardware store around here. I don't know what you're getting at, Ranger. I haven't sold any rope to anyone for weeks. Maybe you gave it away. It was a lot of rope, Mr. Sobel. Enough to hang three men. That's a mighty big rope. Maybe it's even big enough to hang the men who used it. Mrs. Brigham was in the office when your wire came through. She sensed it was serious and insisted on coming along. How serious is it? Half the town went on a drunk last Saturday night. They lynched two Apaches and the preacher. Sunday morning, they got sober again. They've been trying to cover up the crime ever since. Nobody seems to know anything. Have you found the bodies? Not yet, but the local newspaper man helped me find something else. Think we can ask Mrs. Brigham to identify some of her husband's belongings? No, I think so. I'll talk with her. Mrs. Brigham, they may have found some of your husband's personal effects. We'd like you to identify them, if you will. I guess I'll have to face it sometime. Thank you. Drive along with us. Mr. Springham, 
You better wait here. This is Brigham. You better wait here. We'll be right back. This way, Captain. That tent was pitched closer to town. Somebody pulled it down and buried it in the sand here. But there was a big rain the other night. Lots of water come down the arroyo and washed the sand away. Is that the missionary's tent? I left the sheriff here to keep an eye on it. <laughs> he left me here to keep an eye on the sheriff. We found that Bible buried with the tent. No name in it, but some of the passages have marks. Mrs. Brigham might be able to identify the marks. I guess I've known since the Sunday telegram. If you believe in that book, Mrs. Brigham, now's the time to do a lot of believing. What's the matter with you? Don't you uh, feel good? Mrs. Brigham, I'm sorry. Paul, do me a favor. Take this young lady back to town. Take her to my house. Oh, and you might tell my wife I won't be home in time for supper. Where'll you be, Sheriff? I'll tell that to the Rangers. Mrs. Brigham, if you'll turn the buggy, I'll uh, escort you back to town. One thing I can say about Sheriff Trevor, he's got a mighty fine wife. Captain. It's a fact, isn't it? You can't prosecute anybody for murder unless you can produce the bodies. It's a fact. Got an idea, Sheriff? Yes, I have an idea. I got an idea they didn't bury those bodies. They just didn't have that much time. Maybe they just took those three bodies over the old Perkins mine and dropped them down the shaft. Mine's been abandoned for over a year. Shaft's flooded. How far from town is this mine? Oh, I'd say it was a couple miles. I had to pump out that shaft. Pump's rusty and probably needs new pots. The only place I'm going to get those parts is Sobel's hardware store. You think it's worth a chance? Well, I'm not just playing it for a hunch, if that's what you mean. Just what are you playing? Let's say I'm playing a new hand. First thing we got to do is to go to Sobel's hardware store. That ought to do it. Watch out for that ladder. It's been in the water a long time. Yeah, here it goes. There she goes! Here comes Sobel with Tony Snyder. Wonder what's been keeping him. What's going on? What brought you here? Perkins sent us. He's talking to his lawyer right now. And his lawyer says you ain't got no legal right to work on other man's mind. We're not working any mine. We're working on something else. We're real busy. Now just turn those horses around and head back for town. Go on. bodies tied to what looks like a blacksmith's anvil or a man played a new hand you sure played it lucky it wasn't just luck captain oh somebody leaving town he has to go to tucson 
Yeah, I've got to get some new furniture for my Crystal Palace. Well, your Crystal Palace can use something new. In fact, the whole town could use something new. What's he giving us the needle for? He runs the local newspaper. Thinks it's his duty to needle everyone in town. I only came to see you, Snyder. Me? What for? You own that livery stable, don't you? You know I do. I ask. I got some business for you. Mrs. Brigham wants you to put up her horse and buggy. She's staying with the sheriff's wife. Oh, I'll pay the bill myself. Why didn't you say so? Nobody asked me. Figure him. I think there's more to it than he let on. If there is, we haven't got too long to get out of here. So, go tell the men who are in on the hanging. I want to see them. I'll wait here. The rats are quitting the ship. Who? Lemker, Snyder, and Sobel. And they're not the only ones. I saw them down at the stable. I think we can stop some of them. We block off both ends of the street. Sheriff, you and Cullen cover the east end of town. Travis and I'll take the west. Somebody in town talked. Ronnie and Travis are out at the Perkins mine with the sheriff and Cullen. They're bound to find the bodies. We're all in this together, and we'll have to fight it out together. What do you expect us to do? The Rangers will have to be disposed of. With them out of the way, we can handle Cullen and Trevor. We ain't proud of what we've done in the past, Mr. Lemker. But we ain't drunk now. You do your own killing. Yeah. Lemker, you, Snyder, and Sobel are under arrest, charged with murder. Throw down your guns and you'll be given a fair trial. You can't prove we killed anyone. I'll supply the proof. Just unbuckle those gun belts and drop them to the ground. Gun Snyder, I'll kill you. I don't run a newspaper, but I think he writes more than the obituary column. Page one. The leadoff reads, Today in Galeyville, a sheriff earned his badge. We as citizens will long remember Clyde C. Trevor, who gave his life in defense of this community. Uh, the Trevor place is about six miles over the hill. Somebody's going to have to tell Mrs. Trevor 
I guess it'll be me. This is the story of 26 men who rode the Arizona Territory. I is the glory of 26 men whose courage helped to build the territory. 26 men who saddled up and then rode up to answer duty's call. 26 men who lived to ride again and fight for the rights and the liberty of all. This is the story of 26 men enforcing law within the territory. Praise be the glory of 26 men who rode the Arizona territory.